Hi, a pleasant good afternoon to you all out there. Uh, I hope you guys are doing well today. My name is Mrs. Lightborn, and I'll be your teacher today. Our topic for today is slavery in West Africa. Before we start, I need you to get a notebook and a pen so you can take some notes. Okay, so slavery in West Africa. Objectives for today's students is to locate West Africa on map of Africa, define slavery and the word enslaved, examine how Africans became enslaved in West Africa, and then finally, to differentiate between how Africans became enslaved in West Africa and the New World. So we're going to look at the similarities and the differences in that objective. Okay, so what we have here is our introductory activity where we're going to review our last lesson. Our last lesson was on the West African empires. Now, the first question says, what were the names of the three West African empires? And that would be those empires that we would have studied in our last. Okay, so. You can take a screenshot also of the objectives if you don't want to write. The screenshot will make it much quicker and to take notes if you need to. Okay, so our activity here is, so did anybody get any of the responses? Okay, so the West African, African kingdoms that we would have studied prior would have been Ghana, Mali, and Songhe. These empires would have been successful for more than two reasons, but we will look at two for now. Um, the well-trained armies would have um, allowed them to maintain um, their success. Also, we would have had um, very good leaders at the time that would have um, bring these empires to their heights. Persons like Mansa Monsa of Mali, uh, Skaya Mohammed of Songhe would have, be, would have been some of the persons who would have brought these kingdoms and made them successful. Also, the control of the trade routes would have also garnered um, that success. And not only the control of the trade routes, but of the gold mines. Why did these empire decline? And most of all, we will see that there were civil wars among the leaders and rulers of these kingdoms or empires which would have caused them to fight against each other and because of the infighting other people were able to come in and take over also the trade routes where it may have changed and so once the trade routes changed um they no longer had control and so if you don't longer have control of the trade route you were not able to tax heavily anymore you were not able to tax because they would have changed and the control would have gone into some other empire's hand or other group okay the location of west africa West, Western Africa is located in the south of the Sahara. So this area is, is West Africa, right? Is the West Africa. This area to the top here would be um, the Sahara Desert. Also other countries in West Africa. So many of those countries would have been located in desert um, zone, in a desert zone. Also um, north and west of the Atlantic Ocean. So north 
and this is to the this is the Atlantic Ocean here. So to the west, consists of fifteen countries, and we are to know that majority of the slaves taken out of or the enslaved persons taken out of West Africa would have been um, um, out of this area right here. Hence, we have the Yoruba, the Yoruba people that we seem to have some connection with or to be descendants of here in the Bahamas. So let's go further. So what is slavery? What would be your definition of slavery? So my definition of slavery is that it refers to the condition in which people are owned by other people and forced to work without pay. So it means you don't have any freedom of movement or even an opinion. Oh, Juliet, I see you had, um, you had the answers correct for Ghana, Songhai, and Mali. I saw that. Very good. Okay, Dante Farkerson says, uh, my definition was taken by four to do jobs without any pay. Very good, Dante. Enslaved. And the word enslaved means to make a slave of someone. So instead of using slaves or calling them slaves, we call them the enslaved because they themselves did not want to be slaves, but they were forced. Okay, so we have this activity here. So we have this activity, it's called a vocabulary word map. And today's word that we're going to look at is enslaved. So you would write enslaved in the box. And then it asks you to find a definition or synonym. Can someone give me a synonym? A synonym for the word enslaved. So you're not gonna give me the word enslaved again, you're gonna give me another word. A synonym. Now remember now, a synonym is a word that means the same thing or has the same meaning. Anybody? Very good. I see um, Jason. Jason says bondage. Yes, very good. So we'll use Jason's word. Okay, what about an antonym? So an antonym would be a word that is the opposite. That means the opposite of enslaved and bondage. Very good. Very good, um, Mr. Duncombe. I see you said liberated. Yes, another word can be to um, free. Thank you, Jason, for that. So freedom, liberated. And there's another word, emancipated. Okay, so now can we use the word in a sentence? 
can we use the word enslaved in a sentence? Can we use the word enslaved in a sentence? And if you had to draw a picture, what would that picture represent? If you had to draw a picture of an enslaved person, what would that represent? You could write a Okay, so you can continue that on your own. You could draw a picture or you could let me know what your idea is of a picture that you put there. So that activity right there was to help with um, broadening your skills, your vocabulary skills. So that's an integration of language art. Okay, how did Africans become enslaved in West Africa? There were four ways in which an African could become enslaved in West African society. These included to avoid starvation during times of farming. Now, in a farming, that means there's very little food around. And so what sometimes some parents who may have had many children, what they would have done would have allowed their children to become enslaved um, to a rich or wealthy family or ruling family so that they would be able to get the food that they needed. So this enslavement was temporary. It was temporary because they would not have to do it all the time. They were not doing it for the rest of their lives. It was temporary in bad times during droughts when there was not enough food to go around. Parents would have done something like that. Also, the second point is to repay a debt. Now, in African society, if you owed someone, a lot of times persons would um, work for that person until they were able to repay what they owe. And so that was also temporary because once you would have paid off the monies or whatever it was that you owed, in your labor, um, you were free. Now, one of the things that I wanted to mention, slavery in West Africa was different from slavery in the New World in that aspect, because you these times you would be able to be free after a time. But in the New World, it was for life. If you were a slave, you were a slave for the rest of your life. You didn't have to be free when you wanted to be free. Okay, so it wasn't about a debt, a repayment, or for food during hard times. Also, for serious crimes such as witchcraft, adultery, and murder, persons were also enslaved in West Africa. And that was also for a time. So you were sentenced to a certain period of time, and that was a form of punishment. But also, so in these times, you were able to rise up. So even being in, uh, being a slave in West Africa wasn't always so negative in that many of them were able to rise um, in social mobility. So some of them were able to become generals of the armies. Um, they were also, sometimes they got to be prestiged after they were slaves for a time. And so they got honored and they got privileged after a while, so they didn't have to remain in that status. Whereas in the new world, if you were a slave, there wasn't any change for you. You would die in that capacity. As in West Africa, you could always move away from that, right? You could always um, work your way up. In some cases, some slaves end up becoming um, rulers. And so that was also a positive part of that. Um, prisoners of war or people captured in raids. Now, prisoners of wars, when a war is fought between two nations or two countries or two ethnic groups, at the end of the war, they always talk about the spoils. And in this case, sometimes the spoils were people. So instead of killing those persons who were left behind, who were probably injured, 
um, in this war and the battle, they would take these persons, allow them time to heal, and they would become enslaved. And even in that, they were able to work their way out of that enslavement and be able to do other things as well. And so slavery in West Africa was not that horrible because you had opportunities to get out of it. However, a slave is still a slave. Next, how did enslaved Africans become enslaved in the new world? Now, we already know that slavery had always existed in Africa and West Africa was no different. So before the Europeans during the transatlantic slave trade had come into West Africa or Africa itself, um, there was a trade already going on on the continent of West Africa, uh, of Africa, sorry. And what you, I would have you to know is that the trade was called the Arab slave trade. And so the Arabs from the north, northern part of Africa or the Middle East would come into West Africa. And even at some point they ended up in East Africa and they would take persons, um, they would enslave them in the Middle East, in Southeast Asia, um, even in North Africa. So you would find persons being moved away from their homes to go and be slaves in other areas of Africa or taken out completely. And this would have began around the seventh century. So when the transatlantic slave trade began, these persons were not um, reluctant um, to be involved in the trade because this would have been something that they would have been participating in for a while now. So it wasn't anything new to them. And so the traditional forms of slavery then changed. So the ways persons became slaves in traditional West Africa was no longer, it did no longer work that way. So you started seeing persons being kidnapped. People would go out to hunt, to fish, and they would be taken right off the coast and, not, and never seen again. The Portuguese started to do that when they set up their fort on the coast. They set up a fort and on that, um, what was called El Mina, on, at uh, the coast of Ghana, which is remember if we looked at the ancient kingdom, right? We're, we're not looking at the ancient kingdom. We're looking at the coast of West Africa as it is today. And it's called the land of gold. So they set up a fort there. And once they were able to set up a fort, they, this allowed them to trade with Africans for slaves. And of course, to obtain gold and other resources like gold and ivory from off the coast. And so they began kidnapping persons. But when they started to take these persons, they didn't take them across to the Atlantic in the beginning. In the beginning, they took them to, in the beginning, they took them to Portugal and Spain and places in Europe where they allowed them to work. And then eventually they started to take them to the Madeira Islands and the Canary Islands where they had a set up sugar cane plantations. So kidnapping was one of the ways they got persons. The next way was slaving wars. So what the Europeans would do, they would encourage wars between different ethnic groups who already had issues with each other. And so they would provide one group with weapons, guns, muskets, and even sometimes so that they would be able to go and start this war and win because a gun against a sword, hmm, who you think win that battle? And so they decided um, to, to start these wars because in the midst of all of these wars and what's going on, people never really actually understood the whole concept of what was happening because whilst you were fighting each other and getting slaves to be taken, the natural resources were also being taken. Um, so sometimes they would even supply both groups with weapons. So they didn't have any, um, preference of who they wanted to win, as long as at the end of it, they were able to get the supply 
of enslaved persons that they needed. Also, we have raids. They would go on raids in villages. And what they would do, when they get to these villages, they would start fires. And of course, if you're in your home, you would run out. Once you run out, persons would be there waiting to capture you. They would then place these, um, what they call the Y shape, um, fork around the necks, two, um, two persons at a time. And this would start what they call the coffle. And once they would have done this, they needed to get away in time. So they would need the fires to last a while. And so the people who were left behind wouldn't be able to follow the couple because a lot of times, even though these raids would take place and they were able to get people, other times they needed, they needed these persons um, to be able to stay away for a while so they could get far away enough so that they can get away with the persons because the people from the villages would continue to come behind them to get the persons back. Okay, so what we have here is a picture of that exact same thing where you have a fire going on in the background. You see the smoke and you see the fire and then you have the woman trying to protect her children from being taken. This is also uh, this is also a picture of a war or raid that had taken place. And so you see some people are down and out, but they're still in the background. You see they're getting people ready to be taken. And so before these people, if they're not dead, before they're able to recover, they'd hope to be on their way with the persons they had captured. Okay, so question. How similar was the enslavement of Africans in West Africa to that of the New World? If anybody had joined the class, the last class on Wednesday, you would have seen that we went through how to answer questions pertaining to compare and um, comparisons and making comparisons between two similar or different things. Now, remember, I would have stated that when you look at similarities, and it says how similar, but you also have to look at what is different, okay? So I need you to write this question down, and I would need you to give me your response. Okay, so... I will begin to show you what your responses should look like when you're answering a how similar question. This, is, this would be question B, D, sorry, question D on the BGCSE examination paper one. And so these types of questions are always asked. They're worth five marks. And so in order to receive those five marks, you would also need to have what they call similarities. So you have to be able to compare the similarities and both look at the differences. And so, and you would need a conclusion. And in that conclusion, you're just summarizing or summing up all of what you would have written prior in one sentence. So you don't need another paragraph to do that. So I'll begin.
Okay, so that right there would have given you um, two points because you would have put in where, and so this would be a difference. So you would have said in West Africa, enslaved persons could regain their freedom after they would have repaid a debt, right? And then you could further go on and say, whereas um, in the new world, you were a slave for life. Okay. Any responses? And then, okay, so since we have that as uh, something that is different, can someone give me something that was similar about the way they were enslaved. Okay, so we can say, so that's one difference. So if you put in a difference, if you start with putting in a difference, you will need to put in another um, difference because what you would need is either two differences and a similarity or a, two similarities and a difference plus your conclusion in order to get fi the five marks. And so instead of me doing another difference, can you please um, share with me um, a similarity? So I would start with both, right? So both because both shows that you're looking at things that are alike and other terms that you can use for both is, tell me some of the other terms that you can use to show similarities. So similarly, right? Similarly, give me another one for both. So if you're looking at both, both means that they're both alike, so they're similar, and then what else? Hi. Okay, so both, what did both do? Or all? All, okay. All, yes, you can use all. All, yes, you can use all. But how would you set up that sentence if you, you were to begin with all? And also a term when you're looking at differences that will frequently come up would be whereas, right? So you show um, the difference. So whereas, unlike, all of the persons, so Jolanda is saying all of the persons in New and West, in the New World and West Africa, what happened to them? Yes, you started, um, what, how would you complete that sentence? So all of the persons in the New and uh, the New World and West Africa. Complete your, complete your thought. So if I were to complete your thought, I would say all of the persons in the New World and, but what, which persons are you talking about? 
you would say all of the enslaved persons in the New World and West Africa were, were complete. Okay, so let me finish my 10th sentence. I would say paid for their work, but in different forms. No, that's not correct. Because remember, we started off saying that, um, but that was a good try. Remember, we started saying that slavery is ownership of a person by another person uh, um, for work purposes, and you don't get any form of remuneration or money or anything like that sort of that sort okay so a difference indentured servants could receive a plot of land at the end of their indentured servants but these slaves in the new world were not paid okay now remember thank you duncan but remember now you're comparing two things that this thing didn't ask you to prepare. Remember, you have to always focus on the question. Don't let the question get away from you. You're comparing the enslavement of West Africans in Africa, right? Africans in West Africa. And then you're also comparing the enslavement of Africans in the New World. And so don't let that get away from you. Don't start talking about indentured servants because those two things are two separate questions and that will cause you to lose marks. That will cause you to lose marks. Enslavement, just focus on enslavement of Africans in West Africa and enslavement of Africans in a new world. That's the only two things that you're going to compare. And so once you would have done that, so let me finish my question and then we'll go to the next slide. So I would say both um, enslaved persons in West Africa and the new world were taken in raids or slave wars, right? And so how do I know? When we went through it, we saw that they were captured during wars for where, um, when they were in West Africa. And then we also saw that they were captured in raids in the, for the, uh, when they were pre preparing to take them to the new world. And so that is something that you know you can compare because you can check the facts. You can always go back and see that this is what both, in both instances, this is what happened. Okay, so come finish that. You can finish that for your homework. Um, complete that. I need you to complete that. I will put um, my email so that you can send so that you can send um, send it to me. Complete it. Complete it. The whole paragraph. Complete it, and you don't reuse what I have said. Go and look at your notes that you've been taking or review the PowerPoint again. And you will find the PowerPoint in the resource folder for your grade level. So you can go on and you can look at it. And once you go on and you look at it, review it, you can probably even use some of your notes that you possibly may have. And you can complete it. I'll put in my email address where you can send it and I will check it and send it back to you. Okay, so let's, so let's go to the next slide. Oh, Dante asks when it's due. Um, you could send it to me by Monday afternoon. So on Tuesday, when our next class takes place, 
um, we can go over it before we start our new lesson. So by Monday afternoon, by 3 p.m. on Monday, if you send it to me, I can go over it, critique it, and we could discuss it for a few minutes at the beginning of Tuesday's lesson, and then we'll move on to our new lesson. Okay, next slide. Okay, so this is our concluding activity. Now, what you see here is what we call a concept map. And on a concept map, what we do, so in yellow box, you're going to place your topic. And we know our topic is what? Slavery in West Africa. Now, what I want you to do, so everybody knows what the topic is. So what I want you to do right now is in this box where the light is pointing, the red dot, and right here in the next dot, we're going, to, this is our activity to compare. So in here, we're going to compare what? Two things, slavery in West Africa to slavery in the new world. And then we're going to talk in this year, we're going to put two ways in which um, that took place. And I'm going to check the chat. And so you're going to give me the information and I'll fill it out for you. And you can do it as well in your notebooks to help you remember. So a concept map is just visual. It helps you to visualize so it would be easy to remember. Okay, so what goes in here? New world, so we have West Africa, we have the new world. Right, so what else would we put in here? So if we identify two ways, what would be the two ways that we can identify? What is it? There's no school next week after Easter break. Yes, yeah, sure. Yes, that's true. I forgot. I've been so busy working. I didn't realize Easter break is upon us. And so, yes, you will send it in the following Monday. So we could have it for class on that following Tuesday, which is the 14th of April. So it'll be due on the 14th of April. Okay, so, so Don, Mr. Duncan says, um, slave, um, slavery wars, kidnapping. Okay, so where would that go? Where would slavery wars and kidnap go? Would it go under the New World section or would it go in the West African section? Then um, Jason says, um, in the new world, they were, they were enslaved until a debt is paid, I believe. No, Jason, that is incorrect. That would have taken place in West Africa. Um, also, you have Mr. Duncombe saying the new world, but a good try, good try, um, Jason. Um, New world. So Mr. Duncan is saying that in the new world is where the kidnapping 
for um, enslavement for the New World is where kidnapping and enslaving wars would have taken place. Very good, Mr. Duncombe. Very, very good. Excellent. So I'll put in um, Mr. Duncombe's response. So slaving wars. And then he said, kidnapping. So I need someone else other than Mr. Duncan. Someone other than Mr. Duncan. I'll come to fill out the side with West Africa. What about you, um, Jason? And Deontay? What about you, Mr. McIntosh? What about Yolanda? Okay, so Jason, you had said a point earlier. Okay, Jason had said a point earlier that said um, to enslave for death in the New World, but what he should have said was in West Africa. So I would put that in, in West Africa, and I see Mr. McIntosh says punishment for crimes. Very good, Mr. McIntosh. So I'll just put crimes. And then I would put repay debt. Okay, so at the top of the page, you would have written your name. And my name is like Miss, Mrs. Lightborn, so I would have written my name, although I wouldn't have done it. The students would have done it. You guys would have done it. And then we would write in the date. And so now when you go to study, there, this can be a study guide for you because then you would know what to focus on. And you could even extend this further to explain um, um, repay a debt, um, to explain punishment for crimes, um, how, how that took place or why it took place. Um, you could, um, your concept maps could continue to extend greatly depending on what you want. And so you could even put um, explanations here so to help you remember. So you could put more um, circles or bubbles um, so that you can put more information as well. Um, thank you so much for being such a great class today and for your participation. I am excited um, to be your teacher. It's 